I'm not sure whether I ever started that camera or not. <laughs> if not, good morning, YouTube people. Good morning, Coffee Treasures family. I don't know, but my, my computer blinked off for a minute. It usually doesn't do that. That's really weird. Because I'm using the camera. Maybe I didn't start it. If not, I'm sorry. If not, I'm going to go ahead and... I know I didn't. So, sorry Facebook, I'm going to read this twice. Um, I am your treasure. Sometimes you feel frazzled, pulled this way and that by people and circumstances around you. Your yearning for meaning and deep connection drives you into more and more activity. Even when your body is still, your mind tends to race. Anticipating future problems and searching for solutions. That is me. I just admitted to my Facebook Coffee Treasures family that that is me today. You need to remember that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in me. Remind yourself of this glorious truth frequently whispering, Jesus, you are my treasure. In you I am complete. When you prize me above all else, making me your first love, you are protected from feeling fragmented. Whenever you find your thoughts straying, you can train your mind to return to the one who completes you. This gives focus to your life and helps you stay close to me. Living near me, enjoying my presence, involves seeking to obey my commands. I am telling you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Again, Jesus Always by Sarah Young. This is not my book. I am just sharing the devotional book that I love. Okay. So let's get into the scripture. And I'm sorry, Facebook, that you had to listen to that twice. Maybe you pulled something new out of it. I know sometimes I read things twice. Okay, so let's go to John 15 in our Bibles. And do, when you come and meet me, do bring your Bible and your coffee. Because it's just a chit-chat time. And I'm going to eventually have these live to where I can chit-chat, either on Facebook or YouTube. I don't know which. I wish I could do both on my computer, but I don't think that's possible. Unless I go through a streaming company and... I don't know. I'm really not in this to make money. I'm in it to be obedient to God. To share His truth and to share the gospel of Jesus every time I get on here. Those are my two main things that I want to do is share His truth. Not my truth because my truth doesn't matter. Nobody's going to be judged according to my truth. Everyone's going to be judged according to God's truth in the Holy Bible. Oh, I'm losing things. <laughs> I'm losing my Bible markers. Okay, John 15. I can't wait to get my stand, my book stand. That's going to be so great. Uh, John 15, 10 through 11. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. So Jesus calls us friends. If we do what Jesus commands us, we need to love one another. That means we need to forgive one another. We need to be compassionate like Jesus. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was not being compassionate last night. So the Holy Spirit called me out on it. And I have already apologized to God. I've already asked for forgiveness. But you know, sometimes we just get to where we're just like, oh, uh, my patience is waning. 
but we need to have patience with one another because we're here for God's plan and purpose and not our own. And uh, God created us all individually to carry out the plan and purpose that he chose for us individually. So anyway, I need to remember that. Maybe you needed to be reminded of that too. Okay, so Colossians 2, 2 through 3, that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledge, to the assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I love the way that she brings back what she writes to Scripture. I think that is amazing. I really want to write some more lessons this year. <sighs> but maybe, maybe when I get all the things done that I have to get done this January, I need to write them down on my calendar. I have a lot of deadlines to meet in January that I normally don't have to meet. After January, everything's really good. Um, but until January, everything, there's a lot of things that I have to do. Okay. So, Revelation 2, 4 is our next verse. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. And he is talking to the church of Ephesus. Let's read 1 through 4. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Okay, so this was, he was, um, he was talking to the church of Ephesus, and he was calling them out. He was telling them, just like, just like when somebody's giving you good news and bad news, uh, if you're getting a, um, oh, what's the word? Can't think of the word. An evaluation for your work. A lot of times they'll tell you all the great things that you're doing. And then they'll go, but you really need to do this. I really need you to do this. So it is the same way with Jesus calling them out. He said all the great things that they were doing, but they had forgotten the number one thing, which was to love God. They had left their first love. And uh, I see, as I read these letters in Revelation to the churches, I see a lot of churches that fall into these categories. And I really think that this disease that has been brought on the world is a shaking up of these churches to show them what their priorities should be, to call them out and to call them back into purity. Not perfection, because we're not going to reach perfection, but we need to strive for purity because God is holy. And God does not like any type of sin. He does not. And Jesus more than one time said, go and sin no more. So, you know, God will forgive us of our sins. 
But we need to not stay in that sin. We need to turn away from it. And last night, I was like, I had just a really bad attitude. Um, towards someone that God created, you know, and that's not my place. It's not my place. And so I had to repent because even as Christians, we're going to, we're going to get on the wrong path sometimes and we're going to start down that path and it feels pretty good because it makes us feel good. But that's not what we're here to do. We're not here to make us feel good. We are here to glorify God, to share his truths, to share the gospel of Jesus, to help people find their way to Jesus. Many people have, um, they've gotten distracted by the world, just like these churches. All these churches got distracted by the world. They were not doing what they were supposed to do. They were not doing the things that they were called to do. And uh, they got distracted. But Jesus called them back and told them, hey, it is time to get back. And I think that's what God is doing right now. God is shaking up the world, calling his children back to him before it's too late. And there will be a day that it's too late. And um, some may have to find their way back to God in the, ra in the uh, tribulation. Okay, I'm going to read to you um, 1 Corinthians 15, um, I don't know when I'm going to stop, I'm going to start with one, because this is... Um, This is a description, I believe, from Paul. Let me make sure. I don't ever remember who the... I nearly dumped my stuff in my lap. It would have been cool. Yeah, it's Paul. I just want to make sure that I was right. Okay, so this is a description by Paul of the gospel. So, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory that I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day, according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen by Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen above five hundred brethren at once, in whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether I were it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? Okay, then he starts talking about the resurrection of the dead. So I'm going to stop there. Because as I was reading that, the Holy Spirit drew me to something. That a lot of people think that they are unworthy to be saved through Jesus. And none of us are worthy, but it's by grace. It's a gift of God. So don't ever think that you are unworthy to be saved because no one is. Paul, Paul was the worst of the worst. 
he didn't kill Christians, but he rounded them up so that they could be tried and killed and tortured. So he is the worst of the worst, but he is an example, a prime example of the grace of God. And if you are chosen by God to be God's child, he is going to draw you to him. He just is. Either by something like this, reading, you know, somebody reading the word and maybe you getting your Bible out and following along, or by listening to someone on TV. You know, there's a lot of preachers out there that preach out of the Bible. And, um, you know, it's God is, God is going to get his children all lined up before he sends Jesus. When he sends Jesus, the remnant of followers of Jesus are going to be all lined up and ready to be that perfect bride of Christ. And we were not. We were not. At the end of 2019, we were not. We are closer now. There's a lot of cleansing, a lot of purifying, a lot of changing of hearts that's going on. A lot of people are getting back to what is in the Word, not what the world says is in the Word, but what actually is in the Word, and that the Word has not been changed. You know, that's a lie. That is a lie from the deceiver of old. This word has not been changed. I have old Bibles before 1960 that were printed before 1960. I don't know if this is one or not. I have tons of Bibles all over my house. This word is the same today as it was when it was written. Now, it has been translated, and it continues to be translated because it needs to reach everyone, and not everyone understands English. So I do not buy into that lie that this has changed, that this was changed in the 60s. I don't buy into that. That's just a lie from the deceiver himself. I don't believe that God would put a word in front of us, tell us to walk in his ways and his statutes, and allow somebody to change it to deceive us. I just don't believe that. That is, I do not believe that. And I hear that a lot, especially from the younger generations. They have bought into that lie, and it is a lie. It is a lie from the deceiver. Okay, well, if anyone would like to get saved this morning, let me see if I can find my bracelet. Oh, there it is. We'll go this route today. I'm sorry, Facebook. My head is cut off. I don't know. Things just don't stay the same in my little setup here. I don't know what the deal is. My phone's about to fall off of this little perch that it usually just sits so nicely on. Okay, that's better. Hopefully it won't fall off. Okay, that is better. I don't like top of my head cut off. That just looks not good. Alright, so the E-band. We're going to use the E-band today. And I'm going through this quickly because i got to get to church on time. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Okay. All right, for I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, Romans 1, 16. So the gold color here represents God, the creator of all, who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light, and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. We will never be perfect here on earth, but God is perfect. God loves you and he wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. So then the next emblem is the dark color represents sin. Oh wait, am I going backwards? Oh, sorry. Let me turn this around. Okay, there we go. That's better. Alright, the dark color represents sin. 
which is doing wrong things. God says that I, that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin, whoops. Oh, my goodness, it's so hard. My finger is in the way. Here we go. All right. Sin separates us from God. The Bible says that the penalty of our sin is death or separation from God forever. The first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? And so then we have, all right, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Why is this so hard to take? Then we have the red. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, <clears throat> but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin because Jesus paid the price. Okay, now we have the white with the red. Um, okay. The white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10:9. So then the question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus, Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So let's say the prayer if you would like to do this. Let's, God, thank you for loving me. I confess, I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son, Jesus, died on the cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so if you did... If you did invite Jesus into your heart, then congratulations. Welcome to the kingdom family of God. The green color on this bracelet represents growth in your relationship with God. And so there's some more emblems on this bracelet. The heart. The greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that we love our neighbor as ourselves, love God and love people. Like we read in Revelation, they had left their first love. They were doing a lot of things at the church of Ephesus, but Jesus called them out on leaving their first love. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. And then we're going to pray. We're going to pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. And then follow Jesus. 
When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, not being born all over again. And then you have the fellowship hands, which I miss the fellowship with my church family, but my head hurts today. Been sneezing. Just would rather not people think that I have COVID. I don't. It's allergies. I'm pretty sure it's allergies. I'm going to take some allergy medicine at lunch and find out. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. We must share the good news with others. It's like if, if people are in a burning building, <clears throat> are we just going to let them burn? Or are we going to share with them? Are we going to drag them out? It's kind of like, well, I don't know how to fold this thing. I don't remember how to fold it. It folds very nicely, but I didn't do it great, great at all. All right, I'll put that there. I'm going to use that tonight. Okay, I want to show you my t-shirt, Pray Without Ceasing, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. This is another, another love and faith t-shirt that I have. I love these. They're soft. They're comfortable. They have many different colors. I've kind of like... All my t-shirts were either promise t-shirts or... Um, concert t-shirts, which I still wear my concert t-shirts too. I really need to go through my t-shirt wardrobe and um, yeah, clean it out. Alright, well I'm going to pray and get off of here. I need to get my son. We need to get to church in the living room, which is kind of weird. Usually we get in our car and we drive to church, but anyway, let me invite you. Our church is Walnut Springs Baptist Church and you can either find it on Facebook or you can find it on YouTube. And um, it will be a good service. I wish I was there, but not today. <clears throat> Let me pray. God, thank you for this time that we can come together and we can open up your word and we can learn more about your word and we can learn more about Jesus and we can learn more about the Holy Spirit. God, I just pray that if anyone comes here, that you would bless their families abundantly, that you would give them your protection and your provision, and that you would guide them, God. And if they need salvation, that you would draw them with the Holy Spirit towards Jesus so they could be saved. We pray for any prodigals to return. We pray for truth over lies and all that is going on around us, God. We pray for faith over fear. We pray for the boldness to go out and share your truth and the gospel of Jesus. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, well, Coffee Treasures family, I nearly called you Pray and Share Warriors. I guess if you want to be both, you can. I thought this might be a new intimate thing that I could do in the mornings. <coughs> excuse me, to help me get ready for <laughs> tonight. I already have my makeup on. All I have to do is put jewelry on. Um, anyway, I, I love this book. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. going to share it all year long. On Mondays, we may double up because normally on Sundays, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be at church. So much love and cyber hugs. Have an awesome day. See you tonight if you want to join me at 5 for uh, Awesome Treasures. Pray and share. I forgot. And I already have a pray t-shirt on, so I'm good. Um, anyway. Be blessed. Stay safe.